Hey lovely people, I have been having technical problems this morning. Um, doing this from my phone was not what I had in mind, but here we are. So we're just going to do that. Unfortunately, from here I can't see any comments. I don't think I can see who's joined. So we're just going to soldier on because I think this is an important topic. And um, whether you're watching me live or on the replay, either way I'd like you to hear what I have to say. So. Um, Here's what we're going to talk about today. And again, so sorry about the phone, and I'm going to be wobbling all over the place, but here's where we are. So if you want to grow and scale your business when you have been doing all the things yourself, all the things, um, you are probably getting in your own way of growth. And you're probably working very, very hard because you're doing all the things, and um, you need to stop doing that. So the topic today is Quit being the worker bee, and that's really important to the growth of your business. So, some of the reasons that, first of all, when we all start our own business, we, um, we have to do all the things, right? You can't afford to hire staff. It's rare that you can afford to hire staff. Um, you know, you started yourself, you're going to do this yourself, and you're going to do all the things. That's what it is for the beginning um, the, in the beginnings. So you'll be doing this for, you know, maybe the first six months, maybe the first year, maybe less if you're lucky. But at, at some point, you are getting in your own way by making sure that you are actually got, you have your finger on every little thing that's happening. So this is a, sort of a transition that I had to go through as well at the beginning of my first business. And I want to share with you some of the things that got me stuck in doing the, all the things, so being the worker bee. So let me share again some of the mindset stuff that was going on for me. One of the things was that I absolutely loved what I was doing. I ran um, a media buying agency, and I was buying online media for uh, several, many very large clients. I loved it, and I loved having my fingers in the media buying, in the analytics, in the creation of the ads, I just loved all of it. Um, so this kept me stuck because since I got up in the morning and I loved what I was doing, I was loath to get up, give it up. So one of the things you want, might want to think about in your own business is whether or not you are too much in love with the doing of what you're doing and have to stop, stop that love affair and elevate yourself to the point where you're being the leader of a growing business as opposed to doing it all. The second thing is you like to feel needed. This is, this is tricky. So in that you are doing all the things, um, you definitely are needed. And it's nice to feel needed. But boy, let me tell you, um, you're kidding yourself. If you think that you're needed just by doing everything yourself, you aren't giving you credit for the val yourself credit for the value that you are giving to your um, to your clients, and so you are not giving yourself value for all the expertise you bring to the table, all of your learnings. Uh, you are you are stuck in the admin stuff of what you're doing. You're not really bringing your true value to, for the to the table. So that's another thing that you want to be careful of: liking to feel needed. Feel needed some other way. You know, make sure your children love you. Make sure. Um, you feel needed in some other way. This is not the place to feel needed. If your team needs, if you have a team, they should feel like they need you and they're, they're happy to have you there. But don't get stuck in the need to feel needed to keep you doing all the things. Another thing that was very seductive, seductive for me is, and, and is for many entrepreneurs is that chaos becomes a good friend. You get used to being super, super busy. You don't feel like you're really performing unless you are not so busy. And you need to stop that because chaos is addictive and you get used, to, you don't feel like you're really productive unless you are completely crazed. This is an addiction and you need to get over it. Um, chaos should not be acceptable. Feeling out of control should not be a drug. You should feel in in control of what you're doing. Don't let chaos become your best friend because that's going to be a downfall for sure. Another thing that might keep you doing all the things is that um, no one can do it as well as you can. 
and that's dangerous and we've talked about that I think I talked about in my last Facebook live no one can do it as well as you can in the beginning um, not forever and so you need to be sure that you are priming the pump and letting people know and preparing yourselves for bringing other people. Good morning, Tracy. So nice to see you. I'm doing this from my phone because for some reason my ca my computer wasn't recognizing my camera. So here I am on my phone and I'm wobbling around. And, but anyway, here I am. Um, where was I? No one can do it as well as you can. Again, this is a mindset issue where you have to understand that you are going to grow uh, you are going to have other people that are helping you that you will train to do it as well as you can. Don't let that fear of the fact that no one else can do what you can do. You're kidding yourself again. Don't let that happen. So another thing that kept me very, very wedded to the idea of the worker bee when I was uh, early in my career was that I really didn't know what else I would be doing unless I was doing all the things. So I, in the beginning, as I said, I ran a, um, a, a media buying agency, and in the first 18 months, I was everything. I was a client. I was a, doing prospecting and sales and uh, buying all the media and doing all the analytics, and I was the uh, getting. In, I was the front face with the client as well. I was doing everything, and I loved it, as I said. But and that filled, you know, a 50-hour work week, clearly. Uh, I was working a lot, and um, I, you know, I was doing everything. If that was removed from me, I had no idea what I would be doing, right? So what do you do if you're not doing all the things? What do you do if you're not doing all those administrative tasks? This is a matter of education, educating yourself about what a true business leader does. They don't do all the administrative tax, tax. They don't do all the things. Their job is to provide a vision for the company. Even if your company is you plus a contract worker, you provide the vision, you provide the um, momentum, you set the clear path, you're the one who's going to go out and find new clients, you're going to the one, you're going to the one who's going to close the sale, at least in the beginning. There are so many levels, higher levels of activity that you as a business owner will be growing into. And in the beginning, until you have touched those, you don't know what you'll be doing. So trust me, that's being the leader of a business, being the CEO of your soon to be burgeoning business is also a full-time job. So don't get stuck in the fact that you don't know what you'd be doing if, if you weren't the worker bee. So another thing to think about, and if you're still got your hands uh, all over everything, is the skills that took you, the skills that you mastered to build this business and get you to where you are today. So whether you've been in business for a year or two years, the skills that took you to start your business are not the same skills that are going to allow you to grow that business. There's so many um, examples in the venture capital world where a startup will be started with a certain staff um, or certain leaders, and once it gets to be to, to the point where it's no longer in startup mode, those people leave because the skills they brought to the table were startup skills. There's a whole different set of skills that takes to become it takes to become a leader, create teams, uh, be the visionary, uh, different set of skills entirely. And you know, we we aren't geniuses. To begin with, we have to grow into those skills. We have to learn those skills. But be aware that whatever skills you brought to the table to start this business need to be expanded uh, and expanded so that you can become the leader, not the worker bee. Um, the other thing that I didn't, I, I, as I think about it more, this is a matter of giving yourself permission to stop being the worker bee, right? It's sort of an, it's a, a pivot that you have to make because if you're finding meaning and doing the admin stuff, you're not going to find that you are able, you're allowing yourself to move into a position of CEO-ness, of leadership in your business. So it starts with 
recognizing that there's another role to play other than worker bee, recognizing that that person's going to be you, and giving your permission, yourself permission to grow into that, into that new role. So those are some ways to stop being the worker bee. It starts with making a decision that you're no longer going to be content to be doing all the things. You need to start scratching that itch of, you know, what else, I need to be doing something else. So um, start there. Start with giving yourself permission. Start with acknowledging that you are doing all the things and that it is holding you back. Because if it's only you, then you are going to get pretty stuck. So acknowledge that. Start looking around for where you can start expanding your skills. And one of the things I talk about in my blog and in my, um, a lot of these uh, webinar or videos that I'm doing is finding time to create CEO time in your, in your week so that you allow yourself the time to become the CEO of your business and not the worker bee. So those are two places to start. Couple things um, I want to offer to you, and whether you're watching this live or you're seeing it in the replay, I'm gonna put these up in the um, comments above the video so you can tune into them later. One is that I'd love to invite you to join my Facebook group, and it's called Solopreneur to Entrepreneur. And in that, um, we, we have a rocking group of, of women entrepreneurs already. It's a very engaged group. We have a lot of conversation about what it takes to become the head of a growing business. Um, I offer spot coaching. I do videos in there as well. I give you resources. Um, we, we help each other. It's a great masterminding opportunity. So I'd like to invite you to look up there and find the group and join. Second thing I want to offer you is that starting in September, I'm doing a mastermind program. And this is called the Solo to CEO Accelerator Mastermind. Starts in September, goes through till December. Uh, we meet every week on Zoom. We, are, we will be a group of, say, eight women who are dedicated to helping each other's businesses grow. And if I haven't said that loud, this loud enough, masterminding is what has made the biggest difference in my growth as an entrepreneur. I can't speak highly enough about mastermind. So again, that link to find out more about the mastermind is, is above. And then last thing I want to offer you is um, a guide that you can download. And what am I calling this? Um, so the guide is Solo to CEO, Five Mindset Shifts that you, will, that you Need to Make to help you make that transition from solo to, solopreneur to CEO. That again is a download, something you can download. It's a quick guide on some of the things that you're, you, you're gonna, want to, gonna wanna get over so that you can become um, the true leader of your business. So that's it for, for me today. As I say, these are quickie 10 minute, 15 minute videos. I hope to do these every Friday if I'm behaving. Um, so glad you could join me today, whether you're live or you're watching the replay. I'm so glad you're here. If you're seeing this on YouTube, because I post these on YouTube as well, please um, look below and subscribe to my channel and like this video. And I'd love to see more of you over on YouTube as well. So thanks, everybody. Happy Friday. Have a great day. Have a great weekend. Thanks for joining me. Hope to see you soon.